You got a set of pipes on you, son. You got a good voice. I get asked all the time how I got started in automotive radio. And uh, it's kind of funny. I accidentally fell into it. I started an event company about five years ago, putting on car shows all over the southeast from Pigeon Forge, Tennessee to Daytona Beach, Florida. You know, do about 40 events a year, have a great time doing it. You know, help some great causes along the way. It's perfect. I love it. I actually got hired by the local radio station to host a car show. They didn't know anything about putting on car shows, so they came to me. We had a big meeting at the radio station and got everything lined up and, you know, got everything done. Had a great show for them. Well, the vice president of Intercom Radio Stations was walking around the car show, just checking out, seeing how this event goes. Very first time they ever put on a car show, and it went great. And they were very excited about it and, you know, all this stuff. And there's this guy, and the vice president of Intercom, I've never met him before in my life. I didn't know who he was. You know, I'm just standing there doing my thing. I got a wireless mic, and I'm calling out winners or made an announcement or something like that. This guy walks up to me wearing a Florida shirt, a pair of shorts, big straw hat on. Not a typical car show guy. And, and you know, he comes up, he says, hey, you got a set of pipes on you, son. You got a good voice. You ever thought about being in radio? And I said, no, I haven't, sir. Well, I make my announcement. I walk back over to the trailer. He walks over and he hands me his card. That's when I learned who he is. He is the vice president of Intercom Radio Stations. And he goes, what are you doing tomorrow? I said, no plans. He said, you mind meeting me down at the radio station, which is right there in upstate Greenville? And uh, sure, I met him there. We sat down. He goes, I've got a problem. I have a talk radio station that's number one in the state. But on the weekends, he said, I can turn the lights out. And he said, we've tried putting some hobby channels on. And he said, I started a hunting show a couple years ago, and it's done remarkably well. Maybe an automotive show. And he said, that's kind of in your wheelhouse. And he said, you know, every guy likes cars, you know, like that, you know, something to listen to. He said, maybe we sell a little advertisement on it. We walk into a studio, very first time I ever sat at a radio station. He hands me some headphones. He said, here, put your cans on. I've never heard headphones called that before. But I sit there and I put my headphones on and he goes, just talk into that mic. He said, just natural. He said, tell me about your first car. So I started talking about my Trans Am and the story about that. And then he started telling me about his first car. It was a 69 AMX that he absolutely loved and his mother hated. And then next thing you know, we were talking 30 minutes. He said, stop right there. He said, now real quick, say on 106.3 WORD. Leaning to the mic. He goes, on 106.3 WORD. Perfect. He hits a few buttons, slides a mouse around. He said, take your headphones off. Hits play, plays through the studio speakers. He goes, that's going to be a number one show. We got to polish you a little bit. Teach you the rules, what you can say, what you can't. Get you to break it into 10-minute segments or thereabouts. Throw a little station identification and we're there. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, you're not ready for live radio yet. But he said, we'll get you there. So the next two weeks, two or three times, I come in the studio, record a little with him. And little I know, this is something he doesn't do. He doesn't work with everybody like that. He just said, you know, for some reason, he just likes dealing with me. So we talk cars, go back and forth, and I bring several friends in the studio. I mean, I've got my banker in there with me. Hell, I got my lawyer in there with me. I mean, we have a great time, and we laugh and cut up, and we talk about anything. You know, I describe the radio show to people all the time as, you know, you'll learn a little, but you're going to laugh a lot. You know, we cut up, we have a great time. I mean, hell, Ed was my very first call-in guest on our show, and that's how I met him. And, you know, we've had Shirley Muldowney and Jeff Lutz and, I mean, all the Discovery Channel stars. We've had great people on the show, and it's really gained a lot of traction locally. Well, now the big thing's podcasts, and now it's, you know, one of the top podcasts in the entire damn building. we got seven radio stations that are podcasting now. And now Hot Rods and Happy Hours doing that. And then we're talking about a radio show that's not even been on the air but two and a half years. You know, it's gained a lot of traction. And then the thing that's cool about it is it's, it's kind of easy listening. You know what I mean? It's not a, you know, like click and clack or, you know, too technical or anything like that. You know, we talk cars. We get the point across. But we have fun with it. You know, your wife can listen and laugh and cut up. And, and it's just, it's a fun show to do. And, and it's so funny. You know, it went from a one-hour show to a two-hour show. And it even now, doing a two-hour show, we sit down in the studio and it seems like 30 minutes, you're done. Like, you've just filled that two-hour slot up just so quick on a random subject. 
And I love it. And I mean, it's really fun to do. And I'll be honest with you, I never thought in a million years I would ever be in radio. But uh, I really like it. It's a fun job, and I'm really, really proud of how that little project took off. The thing is, I never understood the opportunities that could come being in radio. I've gotten the opportunity to give away Corvettes. You know, I've done commercials. I've done voiceover work since then because people that heard me on the radio. I'm actually hosting a car show in London, which is nuts. I'm going overseas to host a car show because these guys just like the way I sound because they listen to the radio show. It's a worldwide thing. We have people in Australia, all these countries, listen to this. And, and I love it every week. And, and it's just, it's so much fun is the opportunities that come from it, but also the laid back part of it. You know, and you get people that come up to you at events and car shows like, hey, we listen to you every, you know, every Sunday or we listen to you, hey, on Monday when the podcast loads, you know, we listen. And I love hearing people and I love hearing their take on it. You know, I love hearing, you know, hey, Richard, the professor, you know, will he call out my town, you know, or whatever. And I mean, it's so much fun to do. And, and the thing is, I get to do it with my friends. It's not even like a job anymore at all. So the funny thing was the hunting show, you know. After about a year and a half, we started kicking the, kicking the FCC voice crap out of them. And uh, needless to say, they don't talk to us anymore on the hunting show. We're kind of like the bad boys of talk radio there at the studio. But um, we have a good time. And that car show now, we've had five times, and it's grown every time we have it. And, uh, you know, talk about an opportunity that come from radio. I actually got a chance to sell a Camaro to a porn star because of that car show.